A, so you are starting from cyclohexanol and if you have a 2 degree alcohol, PCC gives you ketone. If you have a 1 degree alcohol, PCC gives you aldehyde. You have studied this. So A is, would be cyclohexanone. Very easy. Right? Now you have a Grignard reagent. Now this Grignard reagent attacks on ketone to gives you alcohol. We studied this reaction when we studied Grignard reagent. We will study this reaction once again we will, when we will study the reactions of this ketone. We haven't begun with the reactions of ketone but this is a pretty simple one. So I added this. I, I don't think it, it will be a problem for you to identify what's, what B would be. This Grignard reagent is going to attack on this C double bond O. And the electron of this C double bond O is going to rest in the orbital of oxygen. And when you protonate further, then this O minus becomes OH. So B will be what? B will come out to be this alcohol. Now B is a 3 degree alcohol. Now from B you are going to C. You are adding H plus delta. Which reaction is this? From B to C, B is alcohol, you are adding alcohol, on alcohol you are adding H plus delta. Now you should be quick enough to identify which reaction is this. This reaction is a dehydration reaction. If you remember in dehydration we add an acid. Now I could have shown it as HA. Now I didn't show that. I chose it to show it like H plus. But we understand that H plus as such don't exist. What will exist is HA. So this HA will ionize to give us H plus and A minus. So this A minus is stable. This doesn't uh, participate or this doesn't initiate the reaction at least. So we can show this A minus if we wish. If we wish, we don't show that A minus. But when you add an acid and you heat, add a, uh, you, you also heat the system and you're taking alcohol as a reagent, as a reactant, then you must be quick enough to identify that this is a dehydration reaction. The product of dehydration reaction is alkene. Now the dehydration reaction we have learned lot many examples we have practiced to write the product of a dehydration reaction. So it won't be difficult for you to identify C. C would be this alkene. Right? Now once you have identified C, you are carrying out reductive ozonolysis. And you know what happens in ozonolysis. We have studied this reaction in great detail. Ozonolysis breaks C double bond C like this. The both the carbon that was previously engaged in making C double bond C will not now be making C double bond O. So what D would be, D would be something like this. This is what D is. Now, uh, if you can see, there is a ketonic group. This this C double bond do have this methyl on one side, carbon on both sides. So this is a ketonic group. This is an aldehyde group. This has carbon on this side. On the other side, there is no carbon. There is hydrogen. So this carbon is having valency 3, as you can see. So the fourth valency is fulfilled with hydrogen because this carbon is having one hydrogen here, right? So this is an aldehyde group. So this is D. Now the challenge is to identify E and this reaction I haven't taught you before I guess but you have to use your wisdom. There will be always something new in exam that you haven't studied that was not in your textbook. But, but, but if you look at it with an open mind and if you know a little bit of chemistry, uh, inorganic chemistry as well, you will know that this Ag2O is silver oxide and silver is very less reactive. So in basic medium, this oxide is unstable. So what happens is this Ag2O breaks down in the form of 2Ag plus a nascent oxygen is produced. And you know what this nascent oxygen is going to do, don't you? This nascent oxygen is going to ruthlessly oxidize this aldehyde. Right? And this aldehyde is going to be oxidized into carboxylic acid. Because the system is basic, so this carboxylic acid will again react with this base to give carboxylate ion. So when you, again you give water, that base is destroyed and this carboxylate ion will turn into carboxylic acid. So what E is, nothing, 
but this aldehyde is getting oxidized into carboxylic acid. This is OH. That's it. This is what E is. Right? So, if you could not do it, if after looking at the problem, try to solve it some other time uh, today itself. If you can do it the next time, even after looking the answer, even that is good enough. You must be solve. You must be solving all this conversion problem I'm giving you because that's the only way to memorize reaction. That's the only way to make sure that you know all the reaction you have studied before. So this first phase of the chapter is done. We have learned the methods of preparation of aldehydes and ketones. We solved sufficient problems on them and we know all the reactions. Now we are going to start with the reactions of aldehydes and ketones. Now before we move on the reactions of aldehydes and ketones, we I'll, I'll urge you once again to write all the reactions of method of preparation of aldehydes and ketones somewhere, note it down, look at them again and again and try to try to prepare a concise note of it. When when you are too much familiar of the reaction with the reaction, then you don't even have to write the reactant, reagent and product. You just have to write the name of the reaction. That these are the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, whatever the number is. This is the reaction that I have studied. One is Stefan's reaction, one is this reaction, one is that reaction. And you, the, the, you have to reach to a level that just by listening to a reaction or just by looking at the name of the reaction, the whole picture, the whole mechanism, the reagent, the reactant, the product should appear in your mind and you should be able to see that just by getting a little, little sound of the name of the reaction. So you have to practice that comes with that will come with practice when you, you when you pay sufficient time with it. And if the reaction I'm teaching you, if you just know those reactions, that is more than sufficient and nothing goes out of that. The reaction that I'm teaching you, there's no other reaction in your curriculum of ITJ in the syllabus of ITJ that will that will be beyond what, what I'm teaching you. That's more than sufficient. If if you do this much, that is that is too good. That is too good for the preparation of IDJE. So it's easy. You just have to sit back, note it down, and you just have to memorize it, practice them, write the mechanism over and over again. Note down this conversion problem and try to solve it over and over again. Generate the speed. Know the reactions. Be familiar with them. That's it. And that's going to fetch you laurels in exam because this is going to be very quick and very fast in exam, I tell you. So enough of funda. Now let's begin with the reactions of aldehydes and ketones.